Hey, it's me again, Mr. Smug Eyebrows at your disposal. As you can probably guess, we're still working from home, so I'm afraid you're stuck with Picture Me a little while longer. So, a really common effect to use when creating a game is a 2D outline around your sprite. This can be a great way to make a sprite stand out from the background and draw attention to something important. But, as is often the case with shaders, there isn't actually a really easy and solid way to create an outline that is just going to work for everyone. Instead, we kind of have to cheat our way there, which quickly becomes a bit hacky. That said, the technique that I use and that I see used most commonly is actually really simple to make, and it works in most cases if you just follow a few guidelines. It basically works by taking the sprite and creating a copy of it. We then take this copy, color it and offset it towards the left. As you can see, this creates a kind of drop shadow effect. But if we repeat this process three more times for right, up and down, it creates a nice even outline. And we can do all this inside of Shader Graph without writing any code. So let's jump into Unity and try it out. But first, this video is sponsored by NVIDIA. NVIDIA Studio is NVIDIA's initiative to improve your creative workflow through software optimization and powerful hardware. Their industry-leading GPUs, along with their optimized driver technology, allows you to speed up your process in creative programs such as Adobe, Unity, Maya, Blender, and so on. RTX Studio systems are specially optimized for real-time ray tracing and significantly decrease the render time. Right here we're using the Razer Blade 15 Studio Edition and we were able to smoothly edit color-corrected 8K footage and easily simulate 20 million particles at over 60 FPS in Unity. Those of you who already own an NVIDIA GPU can download the latest NVIDIA Studio driver for increased performance and reliability. If you don't already own one, check out NVIDIA's new lineup of RTX Studio systems by clicking the link in the description. For a limited time, you can get three months Adobe Creative Cloud for free. All right, let's get outlining. So as you can see, I am here in Unity and I've gone ahead and set up this very simple player character that I can move around. The assets that I'm using here are from the Gothic Vania Church Pack. They're completely free on the asset store and we'll of course have a link to them in the description. And before we get started, you want to make sure that you're using URP and that your project is set up to use the 2D renderer. If you're unsure how to do that, you can go ahead and watch our previous video on setting up Shader Graph for 2D. Again, a link for that in the description. All right, so I want to go ahead and give my player an outline. So to do that, let's start by going to the project here and let's go under Shader, 2D renderer and create a sprite on that graph. If you still want your sprite to receive lighting, you can choose Lit Graph instead. It's really not going to change anything. But I'm going to choose Unlit here, and I'm going to name it simply Sprite Outline. I'm also just going to right click on this shader and create a material based on it. Let's call this Player. And I'm simply going to drag it onto my player object. And right away, we can see that our player turns into a white box. The reason for this is that our shader is currently completely empty. And so our player doesn't know what sprite to show. Let's go ahead and change this by opening up our sprite outline shader. And I'm actually just going to turn this into a full screen window here. And as you can see in here, all we have is this empty master node. So let's go ahead and load our default sprite sheet into this node. To do that, we need to create a new property of type texture2d and let's call it main text. And in order for Unity to automatically input the right sprite, we need to set the reference here to exactly underscore main text. Again, we've talked about this in previous videos on Shader Graph, but this is just a value that Unity searches for and make sure that this main text here is always going to display our sprite. Then we can convert this value here. So we'll put it into a sample texture node in order to convert it from a texture into an RGBA channel. And we can then take this into the color input of our master node. And right now we don't really see anything happening in here, but that's just because we need to set a default texture here. So I'm simply going to hit default and I'm just gonna input the player sprite sheet. And right away, we can see that it loads into our sample texture. And under our main preview, if we right click here and change to quad, we can clearly see all of the sprites making up our player. And if we save this asset and go back to our scene view, we can clearly see that our player is currently showing up. In other words, Unity is now automatically loading the right sprite from our sprite renderer into our shader, as you can see right here. Now with that set up, we're ready to create our outline. And as we talked about, this starts by making a copy of our normal texture. So we'll take these two nodes here, hit Control C and Control V in order to duplicate them. And we're going to go ahead and offset this copy of the texture to the left. 
To do that, we need a tiling and offset node. So we'll hit space, search for tiling and offset, and we can then take the output of this node and put it into the UVs of our sample texture node. What this does is allow us to offset both the tiling of our sheet, as you can see here, we can stretch it in and out, and it also allows us to adjust the offset. And that's exactly what we want to do. We want to offset this a tiny bit to the left. So to do that, let's input a tiny value, something like 0 0.005. Of course, this value is going to depend on your sprite sheet. And now these two textures here are going to be slightly different. And because of that, what we can actually do is subtract one from the other. So if we take the alpha of our offset node here, and put it into a subtract node. We can then take the alpha of our normal texture here and also put it into that subtract node. And what this does is actually show us the difference between these two textures. In other words, we're only seeing the outline, the part of these two textures that aren't the same. And this is giving us kind of the drop shadow effect. What we can then do with this is multiply it with some colors. Let's take the output of this, put it into a multiply node, and let's take some kind of color node here, so color, and put that into the other input. And as for the color here, we want to go ahead and pick a bright color. I'm just gonna choose some kind of bright orange here. And you also wanna make sure, and this is very important, that you set the alpha all the way to the top. This way we make sure that our outline won't be transparent. And now that we have our colored outline here, or it's currently just a drop shadow, but you get the point, what we can do is add this back onto our original texture and then input it into our master node. So let's go ahead and instead of just going directly here, let's take this signal and add it together with our drop shadow and take the output of that and put it into our master. And right away, you can see we have this bright orange outline on the left side of our character. In fact, we should be able to go ahead and just save this asset go into Unity, and voila, we can now see this bright outline on part of our character. Now, there might be a few things that are preventing this from working on your system depending on your setup. So we need to make sure that we follow certain guidelines. The first one is that we need to make sure that we leave some room around our sprite. The reason for this is that when working with sprites and shaders in 2D, we can actually only display things inside of these borders. In fact, we can preview this by going into wireframe mode. And as you can see, our sprite here is pretty much just a 2D quad that we are drawing a bunch of color data onto. And so if this isn't big enough, we won't be able to see the actual outline. So how do you leave room around your sprite? Well, you make sure that when you are designing your sprite that you have plenty of room around it. And if you're working with multiple sprites like I am here, when you go into the sprite editor and slice your sprites, you need to make sure that you leave plenty of room around each individual one. As you can see, I've done that here, so I have no problem displaying the outline. And sometimes when you're working with just a single sprite, like I have this ninja character here, again, this is freely available on the asset store, link in the description. Unity is actually going to go ahead and cut the geometry of this 2D mesh to kind of fit the sprite. And in most cases, this is fine, but if you wanna make sure that you can have an outline around your character that might not fit too well. See, if we go into wireframe mode on this character, we can see that the mesh is actually fitted to the character. So to turn that off, we can simply select the character and change the mesh type from tight to full ranked. And as you can see now, it displays the entire image of our character. And if we go back into shaded, our character still remains the same. So that's a workaround for that. And the final thing that you want to make sure is that your sprite sheet is completely square. If your sprite sheet is stretched in one direction, it's actually going to go ahead and stretch the outline as well. So just something to keep in mind. Now with this, we can go ahead and add some more stuff to our shader. So let's open up our shader. And the first thing that we wanna do is control the thickness. And this is done by simply adjusting the offset. So to be able to do this inside of the material, let's create a vector one property. Let's call it thickness. And let's default it to 0 0.005. We can also change the mode here from default to slider. And this way we can choose two values that we can go between. I'm gonna set it between zero and 0 0.05. Then let's take this thickness value and drag it in here. And now we can just input it directly because we only want the thickness to control the offset on the X. So let's instead go from the thickness into a vector two. 
And here we can have the thickness going to the x component. We can leave the y component at zero and then take the output of that onto the offset. And that should allow us to control the thickness through the material. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for color, but we already have a color node here. So let's simply right click on this and convert it to a property. And that is simply going to put a property up here in our outline called color. Let's also go ahead and change the mode here from default to HDR, which is going to allow us to input higher intensity values to make our outline glow. And with these changes, let's go ahead and save our asset. And if we now select our player material, as you can see, we have a slider here adjusting the thickness, as well as a color value that we can change and even bump up the intensity on to make it glow. Of course, whenever you're working with Glow, you also need to make sure that you have a Bloom post-processing effect enabled. We have a whole video dedicated to Glow in case you're interested. So now that our effect is working, let's go ahead and copy it to the other directions, starting with the right side. And doing this is actually super simple because we can take this entire section and just duplicate it. So let's move this out and let's remove this connection here. And let's instead take all of these nodes right here Hit Ctrl C and Ctrl V to duplicate them. Let's move them down here. And we can now take the thickness here. And instead of just inputting this directly into the X of our secondary group of nodes here, we want to make sure to reverse this to the other side. So if we move 0 0.005 to the left here, we want to move negative 0 0.005 to the right over here. And we can of course do this by just multiplying with minus one. And of course, there's a handy node for this. So let's go from our thickness into a negate node. Again, this just multiplies with minus one. And then from this node into our X. And what we now have is both the left and right side of our outline. And what we can simply do is add these two together. So let's take the alpha of our left side, go into an add node. Let's take the alpha of our right side, go into the same add node. And this might be a bit hard to see, but we now have the same sprite kind of shifted to each side. Now from here, you might think, well, let's just go straight into the subtract. But since we are adding values together here, some of these are actually going to be above one. And we wanna make sure that our alpha always stays between zero and one. So to do that, we go from the output here into a clamp node, and we're just going to clamp the values between zero and one. So anything that's larger is just going to be one. Anything that's less is just going to be zero. It's a very similar node, but it's just going to make sure that when we subtract these two, nothing weird is going to happen. And we can now see that we have an outline on both the left and right side of our character. Really cool. And I'm just going to go ahead and sort these nodes so that they don't look as confusing. And just like we've done the left and the right side, we can actually take all of these nodes here and copy them in order to create up and down. And the only thing that we need to change here is instead of going from the thickness to our X, we'll go from the thickness to our Y here. And the same thing down here, except we go from our thickness to our negate node. And then from the negate node, instead of going to X, we go to Y. And that's pretty much it. So we can now take these two values and add them together. So we'll go into an add node here to add our two up and down directions together. And we can then add these two together. So we'll go into yet another add node here. And that now has all of the directions added together, left, right, up and down. And then finally, we'll go from this into our clamp, which goes to subtract, multiply with some color, and then add everything back together. And right away, we can see that in our preview, our outline is now all the way around our character. And if we save this asset and go back into Unity, voila, our character indeed has an outline that goes all the way around. Awesome. And we can of course go ahead and adjust the thickness of this in any way that we'd like. We can adjust the color of this and the glow amount. So there's plenty of opportunity to have fun with this. Of course, you will notice that if you go ahead and make the outline really large, like I do here, our technique will kind of start to falter because we can start seeing the individual copies of the sprite. An easy fix for this is to just create more copies diagonally, which will kind of help fill this out. But I'm just gonna be completely honest, it is more of a hacky fix than it is a solution. Unfortunately, that's often how it is with shaders. But I'd say for most cases, this is going to work just fine. I think this outline is as thick as I wanted on this character. Now, if we zoom in here, we'll actually notice that this outline is a bit uneven. 
some parts are brighter than others. In this case, I actually think it looks pretty cool, but you might just want a completely solid outline. Now, this doesn't always happen, but as you can see, sometimes the sprite sheet gets laid out in such a way that there's a bunch of color around the actual character. That's the weird color glitching we see here. I haven't been able to find out why this happens, so if any of you know something about this, definitely let us know in the comments. But luckily, there is an easy fix for this. What we can do is simply use the fact that we have an alpha channel and multiply it into the different color channels in order to get rid of all this color surrounding it. In other words, before we add all this stuff together, we'll take our color channels and multiply them together with our alpha channel in order to remove all of the stuff around the character. So now that's just black. And this is great, but since we have the alpha as part of this four channel, we're kind of right now multiplying the alpha with itself and we don't want to do that. So we'll take the output of this, go into a split node. We'll go from this split node into a combined node. So we'll take the red to red, green to green, blue to blue. And then instead of using the alpha here, we'll go from the alpha of our sample texture into our combined node instead. There we go. And we can then go from our combined node into the add down here. So just a tiny extra step. All we're really doing here is just making sure to remove all of the color around our player by multiplying it with our alpha and then making sure our alpha still stays the same throughout this step. But the result of this is that if we go ahead and save our asset and now go into Unity, we can see that our outline is now completely even. So it's not going to be influenced by how our sprite sheet is actually laid out. And that's actually it for our outline. We can now go ahead and choose a color that we think looks nice. We can, of course, play around with the intensity. And if we go ahead and hit play, we can move our character around and the outline is going to follow all of the animations. Awesome. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Also, don't forget to check out NVIDIA Studio. If you want to optimize your creative workflow and speed up your processes, simply click the link in the description to check out NVIDIA's line of products. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in March, and a special thanks to Willi Vertanen, Lost to Violence Love Forever, Fraser Marify, Leo Lissette, Nobby Ninja, Jim Shubob Jazz, Daniel Dusanik, Dan DeSam, Jacob Sanford, Mark Antoine Girard, Naoki Wasaki, Gregory Pierce, Michael Korobov, The Mighty Zeus, Owen Cooper, Elson the Fierce, Erasmus, Yejit Kaya, Ismail Lukusa, and Sirius Wolf. You guys rock!